One, two, one, two. Hello, 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 hello. No, I don't know where. Should I, should I lean? Should I really, really lean? If I put the camera like this, it's kind of like, you will obey. A bit too much, what do you think? Hello everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. Today is probably one of the most exciting days that I've done for filming for this channel. I'm at Hlangdovri's Pride event. It's the first one in Hlangdovri. What this video is gonna be about is basically just me learning about the day, about the event, about the community that has organized everything and do other things. And I won't lie, it's also a way for me to meet Hopefully some new friends, because as Alicia would say, I'm, I'm kind of thirsty for friendship. So hopefully it's going to be an amazing day and I can't wait to take you with me. Let's go. So we're a group that aims to support the LGBTQ plus community in the rural area of Llandovery, which is where we're based, and the surrounding areas as well. And today is uh, Llandovery's very first Pride, which we've organised. We started off with a speech from the mayor, uh, which was beautiful and heartfelt. And it was really nice to be included and in part of Llandovery's history. That's a really amazing moment for us. Then we had a lovely parade around the square, which had so many people in it, so many flags. And I just couldn't get over how many people had come to our very small rural Welsh town to celebrate the fantasticness of the LBGTQ community. Then we've had story time with Niall in the White Hall, which was just magical. That was so brilliant. They are so talented. We've had a market stall on all day, which has been supporting queer businesses. So we've had the Queer Emporium, Panadod Gay, Queer Little Shop, a whole bunch of really awesome queer businesses that we've wanted to support. We had a soapbox stage, so we have people doing poetry and talks and music to kind of raise awareness of the issues that LGBTQ plus people are facing. We've got a film festival and they're for first time LGBTQ plus filmmakers. And we've had some amazing entries from, would you believe, like Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, and a lot of Welsh people as well, which has been fantastic. And then we're finishing off with a cabaret, an Eve with Beeve, where Llandovery's resident drag queen, Miss Beaver, she's our prodigal daughter. She's come back from Bristol for one night only, and she's hosting our evening. So yeah, it's a, it's a very, very queer day. <laughs> I'm most excited about the cabaret night. I'm over the moon that we've got my brother hosting. So my brother is obviously born and raised in Tundavri, lives in Bristol. He does a lot for Bristol Pride. So I was like, if we can tap into him and rinse him of all of his stage knowledge, then that would be good. I'm really looking forward to the cabaret act. I think we've got a lot of really great performers and it's nice and varied. It's not just all one type of thing. So I think there's going to be something for everyone. Mostly I've just enjoyed seeing so many people, so many people in rainbows and flags and lots of young people as well who've like really, really got into the fact that it's pride here. That just makes me super, super happy. I think it's momentous because Llandovery is a town that's like steeped in so much history and as a town we're very very proud of our history and like rightly so but I think what we haven't done is look at now and celebrate the people who are here. We've got a thriving LGBTQ plus community here. They should be celebrated, not just supported. It's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason, but seeing is believing. If you can't see yourself represented, then you've got to have a lot of guts to be yourself in an area that is so traditional. I came out in 2004 and there was no LBGTQ representation in my hometown, bar maybe one or two. I spent pretty much 18 years of my life growing up in this town and I didn't see anyone like me. I thought I was weird, I thought I was strange and I didn't really 
fit in and I had quite a lot of resentment for the town. Sometimes maybe through fault of their own, but probably just not because I just couldn't feel like I could be my authentic self and I was living in something that I didn't deem as a safe space. So to have this representation and to have these events happening in the smaller towns where the conversation may not be as forward as your major towns or cities is really important because there are queer people everywhere. We are everywhere. So today, but also what we do as a hub in general, I think is very important for our younger community to know that it's okay to be queer and it's okay to be you and you should be supported and you should be celebrated. But also for the older generation, so my age plus, who feel like who had to move away to come back. When it comes to actual physical representation, it's just letting the LBGTQ community from this area know that you're not alone. We're here, we're not going anywhere. We're gonna be as loud and proud as we want and nothing's gonna dim our shine. It's so easy when you're queer to feel very isolated and alone and a turnout like this today shows that that just isn't true but there are so many people who if not part of the community themselves are huge allies to it and you know there's loads of love and joy around. It sounds very cheesy I feel incredibly honoured like uh, so I don't sound it but I am Scottish and grew up just outside of Dundee which is a town which these days I imagine has a wonderful queer, ski, queer scene but when I was growing up certainly wasn't very present and so to come somewhere rural that sort of reminds me of home in lots of ways and see just an incredible turnout of people that are just there you know nobody's been horrible people have been like really sweet and supportive like flags are all over shops like there's so much support and solidarity and then joy it's oh it just means the world really rural prides are just as important as the city prides um, it's only through the rural prides that we will affect change because if we want to live in a complete society where everybody can live as authentically as they want that means everywhere anywhere um, so support your local prides come come back keep supporting because it is fun and it is going to be a great night and it's these small prides that you get the true essence of what pride means and what pride is for. If you really want to feel pride, it's the small town ones that give that to you. The Heart of Wales' is sort of main mission is to just connect LGBTQ people, provide services and space for them to socialise, to hang out, you know, all the things that everybody else does, but in spaces that are safe for us, that are just supportive and celebrate who we are. We do a film night once a month. We do that in the hall here. We hire it out and we have a big screen and we put on LGBTQ plus films. We organise a trans meetup in Tlandilo, so it's a space for trans people to come and connect and mostly craft and talk about cats, it would seem. We also get together and do brunch. I've taken people on foraging walks, that kind of thing, like just anything really that we can we can do. We've organised a Welsh conversation group as well, so a space where people can come and learn Welsh. I've been learning Welsh for a couple of years. It's a really great space to practice, but it's a space where we can share our pronouns and where we learn and practice gender neutral language. So yeah, all kinds of things like that. Everybody who is helping to organise, who's part of the Heart of Wales is a volunteer, but we, we do this because we love it and because it's really important to us because we're part of the LGBTQ plus community. And yeah, I think that what we've achieved in a year with the group of people who are just doing it basically in their spare time is absolutely incredible. And I'm really, really proud of all of us. The reception from the townspeople and the businesses has been just 
overwhelming. Pride would not have happened if it wasn't for the townspeople who aren't LGBTQ plus and the business owners. We have very, very, very little funds. We get some funding from National Lottery and SETMA and Kamalanchet LGBTQ plus, but mainly we're funded by bake sales because everyone loves a cake. And the GoFundMe page, which hit our target and exceeded it by almost double. We've got a list full of sponsors and also not just like money, it's been the amount of time that people have donated to us and raffle prizes and like Anne Enyan with the, the White Hall is the perfect example of that. And this morning when the heavens opened and I was having a panic at 7.30 in the morning I messaged her long shot but do you think we could do the story time with you and she's like yeah not a problem and the amount of people that have done that like today, I mean, we asked for bunting, like bespoke bunting from Bumblebees, the haberdashery shop in Um, asked them what price, and they said, nope, that's, that's for you, it's, it's a gift. And this morning, coming to see, everyone had a pride flag in their window, and more than that, some people had like little posters saying, we support Lindenbury Pride 2022, and it was just like lump in the throat moment, <laughs> like, oh, my makeup's running. Um, but yeah, it was, it was one of those, it was, just insane the amount of support that we've had. Clindovery's like that, Clindov like people want to see stuff happening and they want to see, like regardless of what you do, they want to see you achieve something good and positive. And so yeah, everyone's turned out and donned a rainbow tutu or a, an umbrella like mine. It's It's been incredible. I might get emotional and I might eventually cry. So... When I look out of here and I see all your beautiful faces celebrating the community that I am a part of, where I've never felt 100% a part of in my hometown, makes me Fucking happening! Honestly, I never ever thought in a thousand years Kentucky would have a pride and look where we are. That is such a tricky question because when we first started Heart of Wales LGBTQ plus Pride was a five year plan and we started in August 2021 so we're not even a year old yet so our five year plan has been like completely smashed it's gone so gosh I don't know I, I mean I'd love to see I mean we've got one cabaret stage tonight I'd love to see maybe a poetry stage one place, a cabaret stage another, the Welsh ballroom community, I'd love to see them doing some voguing for us, a comedy stage, stand-up stage, I'd like I like to see like a proper festival. I envisage a whole bloody weekend. A bit like a Pride Fringe Fest happening on the Friday, it's like a pre-party. The Saturday is the full parade, shebang. And then on the Sunday, having almost sort of like a folky LBGTQ Sunday chill vibes. There's probably LBGTQ folk singers, jazz singers, poets, slam poetry, normal poets, spoken word. A bigger parade for sure. That would be really cool. Maybe one day we can shut down the streets <laughs> and walk in the street, but also I would like to see not just Llandovery, I'd like to see places like Llandailo and Llanurda and Llangardog having their own 
things as well. Like under us, it doesn't have to just be from W Pride, it can be Heart of Wales Pride. And I think that would be cool over like a whole weekend. Yeah, I think just more. <laughs> more stuff, more people, more performers, more market stalls. I just think, yeah, every year we could just get bigger and bigger. I just want them to continue growing from strength to strength, really, you know, to pull this kind of event off for their first ever one is pretty impressive. So they all should go away feeling very proud to begin with. They just need to keep doing what they're doing and keep being true to themselves and true to their community. And they will immeasurably have an impact on many, many people. And as long as they remember that impact and the impact that they have, um, and they will have, and they already have, um, that's the reason why Prides happen. It's not for the name, it's not for the fame, it's not for the glory, it's for you doing something to better a situation. And as long as they just continue to do what they do with the authenticity that they're doing it in, then they're never gonna have a problem and I'll be back in 10 years time and it'll still be going on. I hope you've all had an absolutely lovely evening. Let's take this shit in the pink disco room and party the fuck up. Bye! Bye.